All right, so today we're going to start talking about adding a shopping cart to our little mobile app that we've created here. And there are some existing uh, pieces out there, some tutorials. Uh, there's one called Simple Cart JS. And you could uh, implement these uh, if you wanted to. I don't. Uh, I think it's easier actually to build your own than to use these. But this is one example, all written in JavaScript, and it shows you. You know, this is supposedly their code. How easy it is to do. Um, simple cart. There's one called MobileCartly.com. which is another one, open source, e-commerce platform, um, m-commerce, and they had, uh, ri it's ridiculously easy, they say. Um, I can't navigate their pictures. Portable, real-time, and it even has a WordPress plugin. Woohoo! That just doesn't excite me too much. but. I'm not a blogger, that's right. So that's one, Mobile Cartly. And then there's another one called uh, jQuery4u.com. Plugins 10 jQuery based shopping carts. There's a nice short URL. And this is a, a bunch of jQuery based shopping carts. One called Smart Cart. And it shows you the demos and how these work. Jcart. A lot of these are drag and drop. So let's let's show you this this drag and drop one. Give you an idea. You can drag and drop these things um, into your cart. So I I drag and I drop that, and it adds it to my cart. Isn't that cute? Uh, it probably does. And if I drag two of something, it just changes the quantity. See that? Change the quantity. So that's uh, an example of. It might, yeah. Here's another one that doesn't work obviously so well. Um, here's a jQuery with a back end of uh, JavaScript. Little too much tool tipping here. I can drag to my cart, and it actually does some back end adding to the cart. Yeah, I'm not sure that this is working right here either. <laughs> yeah, so that's not working so well. But that, that gives you, there's a lot of these. A lot of people try to do these. Here's another one. Maybe the internet is down. Here we go. And this one is uh, not a drag and drop, but you add to your basket. And as I keep adding, it changes my number of items here. And this, this opens and closes. This is all a jQuery sliding menu. And I can delete some things, and it animates deleting those. It's kind of nice. Yeah, because other people are using this demo, right? So I can add some stuff. I think it's behind. There we go. So it adds two coffees, delete all these guys. So that's, a, that's kind of a nice one. Not too bad. <laughs> this is a grinder. All right. So that's some examples I wanted to show you. So we're going to add our own. And uh, the reason I'm doing this is because it shows just all kinds of different things that you have to do to uh, get a shopping cart to work. And there's so many different pieces of jQuery that will show in this and, and all kinds of stuff. Um, so... It'll be a fun little process. It's it's fairly complicated. It'll probably take us a couple days to get through this. So let's uh, yeah, it's a good thing we do that, right? So let's start by creating my my actual products 
that I want to buy. And I'm going to put these in a div. I'm going to put them in a content div. And we're going to have, uh, I'm going to have a couple spans in here. And I'm going to use my own, pardon me? Oh, I already had that in, yeah, sorry, I already did that. Doesn't like that. Nope, sorry, start over. So we'll put in our content div, I'm going to add uh, a div called product. And remember that what is special about the data dash? I can call it whatever I want. I can select it. I can use that information. So this is my product div. And I can also give that a, a, a value. So that's the key part. I can give it a value of something like uh, perhaps the product ID for my database, right? So it has a product ID, and I'm going to use that. And I'm going to. I might have a, a product class for styling it. And then inside of my div, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create this with spans. So I'm going to have a data name. And that's going to be perhaps skis. Remember my skis. And what's going to be displayed is skis. And I'm going to have a span with. Uh, the data price, and all of this would be created where? How would I get this data? Database call, right? So I'm, del I'm delivering this data from a back-end PHP page or a Rails page or ASP page. It doesn't matter. I'm getting that data. So I'm, I'm generating this HTML dynamically from, from that data from a table. And so this is uh, 49.95, and I might have a span of data. Uh, well, just to show something different, I'm going to call it description, and oops, this is going to be something like boards of death to. Race your friends downhill. All right, some long description. So that's one product. All right. So let's go. Uh, let's upload that guy, and uh, just to see if I have my my shopping cart. Far end. It's a fire end. Fine. All right, so it displays my my uh, product on the page, and I could style that however I want and make it different colors, all kinds of put a round box around it, whatever. I'm not going to do that. Uh, and so let me uh, pause. So I added two more products to my page in in the same div style, where each one is in a data product div. And each one has some spans for the name and the price and the description. So I've got three different ones. And so I've got three different information products that I can purchase. All right, so that would have all been spit out by my PHP or my Rails code on the back end, pulling data from the database. This might have been a partial to, to spit out the, the div around it, all that kind of stuff. So the first thing I want to do is um, add a button. And I could have added the button in HTML, but I wanted to show you a different way to do this. So let's, uh, let's go down to my HTML, my JavaScript at the bottom. Let's add some script down here. And 
I'm going to do almost everything inside of my document dot ready function. Remember what that did? So that means that I know the DOM has been loaded, everything is in place, and I can start acting on those elements that are on the page. So I want to make sure that that's all done. So the first thing I want to do is I want to add a button, a buy button, to each of my products. And I can do this dynamically in the page as it's being built. So how can I select the, all of the data products? Well, I can do a selection of all the divs that have a data product uh, associated with it. That gives me what type of data back? An array of my product divs, right? So each one of these is going to have where to go? Each one of these is going to be coming back as an as a DOM element that I can play with. Sorry, each one of these, right? Each one of these guys. And I want to. I didn't want to have this content. I don't know why I copied that in here. So I don't want a content around each one of these. Just around. There we go, just around the entire three products. So it, it shouldn't affect anything, but there we go. All right, so that gives me, that selects the data, my data product divs, and I want to do something with that. Uh, and since it's an array, I can call the each method on it and pass it a function to operate on each of, I can spell function right, to operate on each of those uh, divs, to do something with each of those divs. All right, so how do I access the div that I want to deal with inside this each loop? Yes. This, right? So we do a, a dollar sign uh, this, that selects the element that the each is providing for me. And I want to append some information to that. And so I'm going to add a button to the end of this with a class of uh, button cart, just for fun, and add to cart. I know. Isn't that great? Some nice Hungarian for you. All right, so that adds, that's going to take every element in the list, no matter how many there are, that was shipped back from my back end. And when I reload this now, well, it's got to upload. I should have a button fail. It's just slow and uploading. There we go. There we go. Got a nice little add to cart button. Look at that. Beautiful. So I can add that to cart, and it doesn't do anything, right? And of course, I can style this and make it whatever I want. But uh, I could. I could. I need to add some function to each one of these uh, elements in the in the uh, uh, class, right? So I could add a function at the end of that, but another way to do it, just to show you another way, I want to select all of the items on the page that have the class of button class, button cart. Sorry, that gives me all of the elements. And it returns what? An array. Um, and I want to apply an anonymous function for an event that happens on that button. What do you think that event would be? On a, like an on click, right? So in the newer versions of jQuery, it uses the on method. 
instead of on click, which is becoming deprecated, I'm going to use the on method, and we're going to say click. And for that, I'm going to pass it in an anonymous function that gets an event, and we're going to we're going to uh, do something with that uh, function. So every time they click that button, it's going to call this function for every button. It's going to be the same, right? So I have to know what, what comes into that. So I might do something like, how would I get the product ID from this button cart class? So let's... Uh, very good. You guys are good. So let's look at the console. I don't know why I have errors here. From my map, it's from my map stuff. I can't even clear. All right, whatever. So I have. Uh, if I did a dollar sign uh, dot button cart, that gives me the the button itself, right? that I can do that with. And it, it gives me an array of all of those. And the on method will add this anonymous function to every item in the array. All right? Does that? I don't have to do an each. It does it automatically to every class, every element that has the button cart class on it. So given this button class, uh, how do I find the product ID? So one way to do that is let's inspect the element and see what structure I have in my DOM. And I've got my button here. It's a, is it a sibling or a child or a parent of this span here? It's a sibling. It's, it's the same level. So how would I get the product ID? Where did I store that information? I've got to go up to the data product parent, right? This product ID is here. All right, so I need to look at the, the parent. Not quite the parent parent. This is, this is uh, well, it's also given to me by jQuery. I didn't put that in my structure. So what it's going to do, what I need to do in my console, let's do it in the console first, is I get my button cart, and let's just do dot first, so I have one button. So that's one button, right? And I want to do, look up the parent, and see what that comes back to be. So, that's interesting. Yeah, look at that. But uh, I want to look up the parent that has the data of product in it. That's interesting. See, that's why I have you guys for um, debuggers. No. Uh, I wonder. See, I don't ha I didn't have to do this. Let's do this double parent. The double parent works here, but why? I know it put in this extra stuff for me when I added the button class. But that's interesting. I didn't have to do that when I wrote it. So what is different about my structure? Something different about my structure here. I probably should pause it, right? All right. So I don't. I don't know why. We'll have to deal with that later. But it is two parents above because jQuery put in this extra uh, button class around my button, and it must have something to do with my inclusions of those this data. So I'll, I'll play with that. So this will give me two parents above. And for now, as you write this, this is what I usually do to make sure I got the data right. I want to make sure that I get a PID out on the console. 
That's my product ID, by the way, PID, just so you know. So let's uh, reload this page. And I get my, I got my 2120. See all this other garbage. There we go. 2120. This is 1120, 3130, 3120. So I'm getting the data that was stored in that in that div, right? I'm getting this data that I have here. Yeah, I probably could. Uh, it's coming from my Google map, so let's just, uh, just comment these guys out. Ah, I don't want to lose it. I know, I'm trying to see how I didn't close it. <laughs> well, it's slow uploading today. There we go. Better. All right, so I'm getting the data point, and I need that information to do some other stuff later on. So I got my PID, and now I want to store that information in an object on my page. So how do I create a new object in JavaScript? Var. <laughs> um, and what, how might I store that? What kind of structure might I store a bunch of things? An array. Very good. So I have an array. I might create an array in here, and I'm going to do it above this because it doesn't matter. Uh, I'm going to create a blank array. I'm going to call it cart. All right, so inside my, when they click on this, all right, so uh, the interesting thing about JavaScript is that I have to, just creating an array doesn't let me store anything in that array if I want to use a more complicated object. I want to have an array of objects, okay? So how would I create an object to put in that array? Far, far doesn't do it. <laughs> I want to store, but I want to store not only the PID, I want to store the quantity that they have selected, the name and the price, so that I can use that data later on to display on the page. So I want to I want a more more like a class in in Ruby or C sharp, I want to have an object that has different properties. So how do we create an object with different properties in JavaScript? JavaScript. JavaScript. Don't remember. So if I create a new object, I can say var. Uh, yeah right. Uh, Object equals object equals, sorry, new object. All right? So that creates the space in my document to hold stuff. It creates a blob that I can attach properties to. But I have to create the blob first. I can't just uh, attach properties to nothing. I've got to have a blob, and I can put stuff in it. Once I have a blob, I can create properties on the fly dynamically and add as many different properties as I want to that object. All right? That's pretty cool about, about this. So this is, in order to do that, I want to also keep track of if they click the button twice, I don't want to add the object again. I want to increment their quantity. Right? I don't want to add 14 pairs of skis. I want to change the ski object to have a quantity of 14. Does that make sense? So in order to do that, you have to do this kind of stuff here. So I have to check, does my cart with this particular PID exist? 
All right? If it exists already, that means I've already created the object and I've added stuff to it. If it exists, I only need to change the quantity property of this object that I've already created or will create in the next few seconds. All right? So I can take the cart sub PID and its quantity object property, its quantity property, and add one to it. Just like that. Bada boom, bada bing. So, but I don't have my little blob yet. Otherwise, that means the, the object, my blob, is not created yet. So I have to create a new object. So I say cart sub pid equals object dot new. So that creates my blob. Once I have my blob, I can attach as many properties as I want to it. So I can say cart sub PID dot, I'm adding a property to this blob, quantity is one, because this is the first time I've added it to my cart, so he's going to have a quantity of one, so that later on when he adds two, I can increment it up here. All right? So then I say cart sub PID, and I might want to store all the stuff so I don't have to look it up later. How do I get the name of this particular data. Now this gets a little more complicated. All right, so let's go look at the the uh, elements. And unfortunately, this is going to change too. But how do I get the name which is stored up here? It's only one parent. But it's not always going to be the first span. I want to look up by the data name just to show you a different way to do this. So I need to go up the, up the line once, and then I can look at all of its siblings because this span is a sibling of this div, right? These are, these are well, they used to be. But these are, these are siblings of each other. So... I should be able to I should be able to do this dot parent dot siblings all of the span siblings I only care about the span siblings I'm filtering it by spans and then the data all of those that have the name I want the the key value of the data dash name the equal side of that attribute so that's going to be stored in name, pid, cart pid dot name, and the same thing is going to be similar for the price. This dot parent dot sibling span. And to go to give you another one, I can use uh, the next one, which gives me the second one in the span. I don't. Well, if there are, if there happen to be later on other stuff added to the HTML, I only want to filter out the spans. Yeah, I'm just showing you. Yeah, I understand. There's thousands of ways to do this, so. Uh, I'm just showing you a bunch of different ways. It probably is a little slower, sure. And I want to look for the data of price. So that's a that's a really complicated one. All right. So at this point, my cart sub pid blob has these three attributes associated with it. Well, we'll get to that later. No, not right now. Right, when I do the displaying of the cart is where I would do that.
All right, let's uh, come on, upload. Uploading. Our school internet went down. There it goes. So let's see if this works. Nope. That's great. Why is that? Because you don't do it that way in JavaScript. You do it this way in JavaScript. <laughs> See, I did that just to show you that these errors happen, right? Yeah, that's why I did it. Uh, it's really hard. Come on. All right, so it uploaded, and we can hit Add to Cart, and it seems to be working, but how do we know that? Well, one way is let's go look at the source. Oh, it did. What the heck? You seriously you going to do it again? So let's uh, look at the actual code. Wow. Seriously? Why can't I see it? Pause. Do it in JavaScript here. I click Add to Cart. The first time through, the cart pit is not defined, right? It's not, does, I don't have a blob yet. So it goes to my else. It creates a new object, so I step over that. And once I have my object, I can start adding properties to that. Oops. Um, so let's go. Let's go back to here, and run it. Um, and let's watch my cart. And I can see that I have one object in there, an object called 2120. And it has a name and a price and a quantity. Isn't that great? Yeah. So now if I hit Add to Cart again, then it comes in, it check, gets my PID. Uh, what am I hitting? Uh, I don't want that. I want over. That's the problem. Uh, it says, does my cart 2120 exist? Yes. So I want to add one to the quantity of that blob that was already done. So I come back. Now my 2120 should have a quantity of two. Isn't that great? Isn't that cool? So my add to cart is going to work for all of my little products here. Um, let's just uh, skip through a bunch of them. And now let's look at my cart. And I've got one of each of the products. Some of them have quantity one, some have quantity two. So my cart is getting filled up uh, as they click on those buttons. Isn't that great so far? All right, so we have a lot more to go through, but that's a good start. So we'll stop there. <laughs>